friends here is a small quotation about the cash market so just i want to give you explanation for the cash market uh, i have selected randomly a security that is so the reliance industries limited i am not holding shares of this like company so just i want to give you some basic explanation nothing great about it you can see that so the two prices are there 1936.30 and 1938.05 so there are two prices which are there so basically these two prices are indicating that say one is the price at which say an investor is ready to buy and another is the price at which an investor is ready to sell so the trader who wants to sell the security wants to sell at 1938.05 and say a trader who wants to purchase a security is ready to buy at 1936.30 so that is the way that two quotations that we have and difference between these two are given a name as say the spread the trader who wants to sell is ready to sell 42 shares then the next best quotation which is there in the market the next best quotation is and that is talking about the sale price 1938.70 it means that say out of all the traders who are ready to sell the security a trader who is ready to sell at the lowest price that is what say we get a display over here for that say we get a display over here this is the price at which so the trader is ready to sell now the next best trader who is ready to sell the security is 1938.70 then 1938.75 1938.80 1938.90 and what is the quantity that say they are ready to say do the transaction is mentioned over here so in the entire market at a particular point of time in the entire market at a particular point of time so this is the time whatever the number of traders say who are ready to sell the security is in total 9,43,238 that is the price that is say that is the quantity which is that the traders are ready to sell in case of the purchase out of all the traders a trader who is ready to buy at the highest price his price is displayed over here that is 1936.30 the next best price is 1936.25 next is 1936.20 so whatever the best quotation is displayed second best third best fourth best and so on whatever the quantity that say they want to buy is also displayed over here at this point of time the total buy quantity is say 2,82,592 that is what say the kind of like this is what we understand is a kind of order book and this is an example of the cash market this is an example of the cash market this is what we understand so uh, I am asking a question to all of you suppose at this point of time suppose at this point of time i want to purchase i want to purchase 50 shares of reliance company then my question to all of you is what is the total amount that i have to pay Ignoring the transaction cost, what is the total amount that I have to pay? I want all of you to tell me. Dear students, we have to understand that I have mentioned over here, listen carefully, that I want to purchase 50 shares. So what happens at over here? I have to approach to somebody who is ready to sell because I want to buy. So I have to approach to somebody who is ready to sell and uh, say these are the traders who are ready to sell. These are the traders who are ready to sell. 
I want to purchase 50 shares. The very first trader who is ready to sell at the lowest price, he is ready to sell only 42 shares. So what happens at say 1938.05? into 42 that is the price at which 42 shares will be purchased and 1938.70 into 8 so this is the price at which I am going to buy the shares so 1938.05 into 42 my answer comes to 81,398.10 1938.7 into 8 that comes to 15,509.60 How this 8 is coming? It is balance in figure 50 minus 42. So 15,509.6 plus 81,398.1 So the total comes to 96,907.7 This is the price that we are required to pay so to purchase 50 shares. Next question Question number 2b, the question says that say, explain futures contract, that is a question. Chalo. Let us have understanding that say what is a futures contract. Everybody is requested to pay attention, let me give explanation to you uh, before we write the answer. So answer of question number 2b, okay. Yeah, let us have understanding of the futures contract. Dear students, so far the working that say we have done, in that I have given explanation to you say for the forward contract. Within I have told you something like this, that say there are two traders, Maulin and Urvish. These two traders are having say certain expectation about the price of the security. So they enter into the transaction to do a transaction for the security let us say after a month and uh, if at all expectation of Moulin fulfills then in that case he will make a profit if expectation of Urvish fulfills then in that case he will make the profit this is what say, we have studied so far now whatever we have studied this exactly the same is the futures contract In terms of the basic transaction, so there is no difference between forward contract and futures contract. Understand well all of you, don't write anything, let me explain you. Forward contract and futures contract. are same full stop forward contract futures contract are exactly same there is no difference between both of them conceptually Again, there are two parties. One is going to have the transaction to buy the underlying asset. Another is going to have the transaction for sale underlying asset. The price at which the transaction will take place is pre-decided. Like on 1st of January, for 31st of January, it is pre-decided. That says somebody is going to buy the underlying asset. Somebody is going to sell the underlying asset. The price at which the transaction will take place is also decided at this point of time. So basically, conceptually there is no difference. 
there is a difference between both of them only in terms of execution of the transaction. There is a difference between both of them in terms of only execution of the transaction. Everybody is requested to pay attention. As far as a forward contract and futures contract is concerned, there is a difference between both of them, something like this. The first difference between both of them is forward contract is informal and futures contract is formal. Dear students, you might have heard something like this FNDO market in the stock exchange, in National Stock Exchange, Bombay Stock Exchange. You might have heard something like called FNDO market. What is FF stands for the futures? As far as the forward market is concerned, so that is entered upon, so between me and my friend informally. So we just do the transactions directly. It is given a name as, say, technically over the counter. Over the counter means that, say, we are doing it directly with one another. Where the futures contract is not entered upon, so between the two traders directly, but it is entered upon through an exchange. That is in India, we know that so the National Stock Exchange, Bombay Stock Exchange are the stock exchanges through which the transaction is entered upon. So the futures contract is so governed by the standardized agency, while the forward contract is not governed by so the standardized agency. Between both of them, so there is a difference, something like this. In case of the forward contract, we understand that, say, <coughs> regarding the time period, whatever the mutual understanding that, say, both of us are having, mutual understanding that, say, both of us are having, for that, so the transaction can be entered upon. We may enter into the transaction for one week, one month, one year, anything. That's say whatever two of us decide based on that so the transaction can be entered upon. In case of the futures, it is not like this. <coughs> Just a minute. In case of the futures, as far as the stock futures is concerned, I am giving explanation of that. Listen carefully to me. On 1st of January, you can enter into the futures transaction for the stock for the month of January, February and March. These are the three months for which the futures contract can be entered upon. Each of the monthly futures will expire on last Thursday of the respective month and if it is public holiday then the preceding day. Let us say that say for the month of January the last Thursday is 28th of January. For the month of February the last Thursday is let us say uh, 25th of February and for the month of March let us say the last Thursday is 26th of March. So on 1st of January, if at all you will see the terminal, you will find that say, these are the three dates for which the futures contract can be entered upon. If at all I want to enter into say, the futures contract on 1st of January for the month of April, can I? The answer is no. At one point of time, so there are only three stock futures contract which can be entered upon. Once the January futures contract is expiring on 28th of January, on 29th of January, you will find that so the futures contract will be available for February, March as well as April. In a way that say, at one point of time, three stock futures contracts are available in the stock exchange. Third, date of expiry. 
over here so again the mutual understanding whatever the mutual understanding that say we have based on that say we can keep well over here as i just explained to you it is the last thursday of the respective month and if it is public holiday then the preceding day that is the date on which so the futures contract will expire fourth number of shares slash lot size now friends in case of the forward transaction the forward transaction can be entered upon between my friend and me for any number of shares we may enter into the transaction for one share 10 shares 100 shares like that say whatever mutually that we decide that is again the mutual understanding that say whatever we have over here see in case of the futures contract the things are not like this all of you must have heard something like about the lot size if at all you might have made application in ipo initial public offer so what happens at say in that say you are having say certain lot size for example for example say a company xyz limited has lot size of 30 shares so you have to enter into the futures contract for 30 shares for 60 shares for 90 shares for 120 shares and so on in a way that say the transaction is required to be entered upon for 30 shares or in multiple of that 30 shares or in multiple of that that is the way so you are required to enter into the uh, we can say that say the lot size number of shares or in multiple of that only in the futures market fifth very important point is margin see what happens at say if at all a transaction is entered upon between two friends or informal transactions are there then in that case say the there is nothing which is required to be paid like on the 1st of january for the transaction which is entered upon for 31st of january so over here so there is no margin requirement however that is not the case in case of the futures contract friends in case of the futures contract what will happen listen carefully what i am going to speak in case of the futures contract whenever i enter into the transaction for purchasing of the reliance in futures then in that case i do not know that sir who is that opposite person with whom i am entering into the transaction it is entered upon through a terminal so i do not know that say who is the opposite person so basically i do the transaction with a faith in the stock exchange so stock exchange is responsible to me and also to the opposite person when say the transaction will materialize for example today's date is 1st of january let us say that say for the month of march the futures contract is entered upon which is going to expire on 25th of march listen carefully what i am going to speak on 1st of january for 25th of march i enter into the transaction to buy a security let us say at the rate of rupees 1200 that is the price at which say i have entered into the transaction to buy now you understand very well that say this is a huge time gap during this time gap say there is like huge volatility is possible now during this time period let us say the price of the security is falling down falling down falling down and let us say at this point of time price of the equity share is rupees 400 so what happens that say you enter into the transaction to purchase a security at 1200 
and uh, say ultimately the price of the security is falling down just to 400 so purchasing at 1200 selling at 400 so ultimately it will result into a loss of 800 so loss of 800 rupees on per share let us say that the lot size is 200 shares so there is a huge loss that i will be having there are fair chances that the trader who is having a loss will default and if at all he defaults then in that case the opposite person is going to tell to the stock exchange to reimburse a profit that say he has made that is the reason what will happen in case of the futures contract say a margin is collected over here margin is collected and the margin is collected initially when the transaction is entered upon and margin is collected on the progressive basis also from the trader who is entering into the transaction for the futures. Basically the margin is collected from the trader so as to make sure that if at all he is incurring a loss then in that case if at all he does not pay the loss then this amount will be used for the purpose of say recovering the loss from him. This is what say, we understand is the concept that we have so called margin it is there in futures it is not there in forward. Sixth, we understand that say there is like the transparency. In case of forward contract, other traders will not come to know what is the price at which these two traders have entered into the transaction. Suppose Mr. A is doing a transaction with B, with C, with D, with E. However, other traders are not aware what is the price at which he has entered into the forward contract for purchase, sale, price at which so the transactions have been entered upon with this individual trader. But in case of the futures, the things are not like this. In case of the futures, the price at which the transaction is taking place, what is the quantity for which the, tra that is, so the transaction is taking place, everything is say predefined. And there is a transparency. Uh, so other traders who are not party to the contract can also come to know that what is the price at which so the transaction is taking place. Next is a settlement. As I was so giving an example like this that I enter into a forward contract with my friend to purchase security at the rate of 1000 okay on 1st of January the transaction is entered upon for 31st of January and let us say that on 31st of January price of the security is 1100 so I went to my friend I told him that Urvish here is 1000 rupees you give a security to me my friend is telling me that some only see basically what happens the stock market price in the cash market is 1100 you purchase from me at 1000 you sell in the market for 1100 so basically you are going to make a profit of 100 I said yes you do one thing I am giving 100 rupees to you that is what say, he told me so let us say, settle the transaction in cash I don't want to go in the market to buy the security so you do one thing let's say you take 100 rupees so we can have say, the settlement over here as a difference or I may tell to my friend that say no I want the physical delivery only so again it is the mutual understanding that say both of us are having based on that so the transaction will enter upon based on that so there will be a settlement there can be difference, there can be physical, whatever we decide. In case of the futures, it is not like that. It is what say the standardized agency that is the exchange. In that, say they already have decided. As far as the stock exchange is concerned, as far as the stock exchange is concerned, in India, in India, say we have the settlement through the difference. 
it means that say if at all you have entered into the transaction to purchase and the price of the security increases then in that case you will get the profit that is that difference will be given to you and if at all say the price of the security reduces then in that case the loss will be recovered from you this is the way say the settlement is done as the difference but that is not the case everywhere in the world there are exchanges in which the physical transaction is required to take place so it depends further as far as the multi commodity exchange is concerned okay commodity is also an underlying asset we know that so the wheat gold silver platinum like number of commodities are there for that also we are having so the futures market as far as the mcx in india is concerned they have bifurcated whatever the number of products in that say certain products for which the transaction will take place through physical delivery there will be certain products for which the transaction will take place say through the differences so whatever the stock exchange is taking a decision that decision is required to be followed by all the participants to the exchange that is what we understand so over here so these are the major differences that we have between forward and futures so let us answer answer of question number 2b in the write down futures contract in the write down further futures contract is exactly the same as forward contract comma with certain differences in terms of execution of transaction full stop in futures contract also there are two traders comma who enter into a transaction for purchase slash sale of underlying asset full stop the price comma time period comma underlying asset are predetermined full stop differences between forward and futures are as under c 
सीरियल नंबर पॉइंट फॉरवर्ड फ्यूचर्स प्रिपेयर अ टेबल लाइक दिस रेड ऑन फर्स्ट डिफरेंस इन द पॉइंट कॉलम राइट डाउन फॉर्मल इनफॉर्मल इन द फॉरवर्ड कॉलम राइट डाउन इट इज एन इनफॉर्मल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इन फ्यूचर्स कॉलम राइट डाउन इट इज अ फॉर्मल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कॉमा एंटर्ड अपॉन थ्रू स्टैंडर्डाइज एजेंसी OTC derivative in forward column forward contract column write down it is OTC in bracket write down over the counter derivative transaction in future set down it is entered upon through exchange third point date of expiry in forward contract column write down mutually decided by both traders in futures column write down it is decided by exchange full stop in ns c that is nsc slash bsc national stock exchange bombay stock exchange comma stock futures expire on last thursday of respective month full stop if it is public holiday comma it will expire on preceding day full stop next fourth time period in the forward column write down 
डिपेंड्स अपॉन म्यूचुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग फुल स्टॉप इन केस ऑफ द फ्यूचर्स कॉन राइट डाउन एस डिसाइडेड बाय एक्सचेंज फुल स्टॉप इन एन एस सी स्लैश बी एस सी इट कैन बी एंटर्ड अपॉन फॉर मैक्सिमम थ्री डेट्स फुल स्टॉप एग्जाम्पल ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ जेन्युअरी इट कैन बी एंटर्ड अपॉन फॉर जेन्युअरी कॉमा फेब्रुवरी एंड मार्च फुल स्टॉप वंस जेन्युअरी फ्यूचर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्सपायर कॉमा ऑटोमेटिकली एप्रिल फ्यूचर्स विल बी ओपन फुलस्टॉप फिफ्थ इन दट राइट डाउन लॉर्ड साइज In case of the forward contract, call up write down. As mutually decided by both traders. Over there, write down. As decided. by exchange full stop for example lot size is 100 shares comma futures can be entered upon For one hundred, comma two hundred, comma three hundred, like that, number of shares. Full stop. Sixth margin. In forward contract column, write down there is no requirement of margin. Full stop. In futures, write down margin is required to be. Collected, comma, so as to reduce possibility of default. Seventh, transparency. In 
the forward condom right down there is no transparency because others cannot know price comma quantity comma time for which transaction is entered upon on the other hand write down these transactions are transparent because it is entered upon through standardized agency just a minute next method of settlement in forward contract column write down it is mutually decided by both traders on the other hand write down it is decided by exchange full stop it can be cash or through physical de physical delivery full stop So friends, 